go. Hey, everybody. Hello. So we didn't record it yesterday because I was like, last, I'm last uh, night. Last well, week yes, either. Yesterday. Well, yeah, but like I was gone last week and no one would do it with you. So No, and nobody wrote down all the instructions for Sarah. So. Exactly. Unless, some, you know, you guys we'll have the that. feedback if you actually want to hear me by myself do this. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is that one time with Father Joe. Mm-hmm. I like yeah, he talked once fine. in a while, yeah. but yeah. Well, funny. I mean, it's like. I had one idea the other day, because we do the church bulletin inserts, there's another one that's going to be coming out soon, but right. I was actually talking to Carol, um, and we were talking, she was just sharing a bunch of memories, for, uh, like funny things that happened in the parish like 25 years ago, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. I bet. But like, <laughs> these are like, th- it's just fun to listen to, like, I'm like, because I wasn't here, you know? Yeah. So, um, we were talking about that, and I had this, I had this thought. I was like, you know, like, because I keep encouraging people to give more witnesses, like, yeah, and that sort of thing, and um, like when they're in conversation or talking to people or whatever. And so, what's funny though is, is, is we were talking, and it just kind of dawned on me that like, not every witness has to be like super deep, you know. Like sometimes it's just a good story that makes you laugh, and yeah. Um, so Carol was telling, told me like three of them, and I thought about it. I was like, we should have like a new podcast, like not Church Bulletin or whatever, but just like, like fun. A like, funny thing happened on the way to St. Jude. Yeah, what happened? No, no, no. Like, oh, I'm cl- oh, that, oh I'm I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name of the thing. But anyway. You know, the musical. But St. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jude, Jude, the musical. The musical. <gasps> oh. oh. <laughs> and that's the logo. Just the hands. But bump. There it goes. But anyway, but like, but but for real, I was like, Carol, would you ever sit down with like me and Sarah and, and like just like chat about, just tell us stories, you yeah. know? And she was like, absolutely. That'd be great. And I was like... I'm just listening to the ladies in Let's Hang Out mm-hmm. today as they're talking. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> we might have to just make Let's Hang Out the podcast. I don't know, because it's, it's be... awesome. But anyway, it's something to think about. But if you, if you want to see something like that or if that would be something you'd like to listen to or, or participate in, you know, let us know. If um, there's all like the sky's the limit right now. We're very open. And we'll talk about that in a second because we're starting to move on our... Um, Disciple Maker Index, but you know what we haven't done in a while is talk about the bulletin cover. Well, because yeah. it's been nature it's for been a nature. long time. We did it like twice, and then it was like, okay. Yeah. Started to look like but my daughter's kinda... watercolor paintings, which I think <laughs> I need to put on the internet like to sell, because like some of these pictures that I see, I'm like, um, my daughter does this. Like I'm like, we could, anyway. But, uh, but no, this is Bartimaeus. This is the blind man, right? This is him, Bartimaeus the beggar. And it's really funny because... Um, at the Bible study yesterday, I was like, this is like my favorite Bible story. And Tom was like, well, yeah, because Tim's in it. And I was like, what? I'm like, oh, Timaeus. Because like his actual name is probably Timaeus, but Bartimaeus, Bar Timaeus is son of Timaeus in Aramaic, is it? I don't know. It's one of those languages. <laughs> I, I am not, not English, the, I but am anyway, not Bartimaeus. The person there. <laughs> I know. So Bartimaeus, but this is this, we, we broke this down in Bible study um, on Wednesday and it was... It was beautiful, but one of my favorite things about it is how there's all these funny like juxtapositions. Like it says that he finds out that Jesus of Nazareth is coming, mm-hmm. but he doesn't cry out, "Jesus of Nazareth, have pity on me." He says, "Jesus, son of David, have pity on me," and he recognizes who Jesus is. Um, and what's interesting then too is the people hear this and they start to rebuke him, you know, which I as a kid always thought that meant like you're bothering Jesus. But Jesus is walking out of Jericho with like a big crowd. So like, I think they're telling him, dude, don't blaspheme, be quiet. But he just gets louder. And then this is my favorite thing. And I think this is the lesson for everybody. Jesus looks at the people who are rebuking Bartimaeus Mm -hmm. and tells them to call him. Like he doesn't like say, hey guys, stop it. Be nice to the blind guy and walks over. He's like, no, you people who are being mean, you bring him to me. <laughs> like, it's awesome. So um, I think the big, there's so many things we can pull out of this gospel, but that was one of the things I was thinking about. Um, but yeah, this picture just shows Bartimaeus. He's, he's getting ready to call out. Like, it's the moment of realization. So take some time, pray with it, listen to the gospel. Um, you know, if you don't get to listen, I know Father Luke and Father Ross are going to both have, like, awesome takes on this. So if you can, you know, find a way to hear, you know, both homilies, do it because it's going to be good. Anyway. Sure. Yeah. So that's the bulletin. In this bulletin, we're going to talk a lot about uh, the November calendar. Um, there's an OCIA adult news um, editorial thing in here. 
Um, we've got the schedule for All Saints Day and All Souls and the policy for bulletin publications, as well as some other stuff. So we will get into it. But uh, before we do, do you want to crack open the children's bulletin, or do you want to keep going with this? Um, we didn't plan this podcast. Not, We're just rolling. I'm not 100% sure. Um, <laughs> well, why don't you think about it so, at all? <laughs> anyway, um, no, so, well, uh, we had honored um, Hispanic Heritage Month um, mm-hmm. all throughout the middle of September to middle of October. Yes. But also here in October has been a variety of other um, heritages, like Italian-American, mm-hmm. Polish-American, uh, German-American, and um, Filipino. Oh, cool. So um, last week we did put... T- Two of them, two of the other ones in the children's bulletin. Mm. Uh, this time it's Italian American. Um, so Francis, uh, Mother Francis Cabrini is in here as our saint this time. Cool. Um, there is something about Jesus help us to see, right? Mm. And then I think I can't remember where I just saw this, um, but just to think about like this, your senses. Mm-hmm. Um, this blind man who was sitting there begging, but just all the senses and how thankful we can be to God for the, all of our senses to touch, to see, to hear, yeah. to taste. Um, well, and there's s- another one that's missing. Mm-hmm. Smell. Smell. Uh, but, like, when you lose those senses mm-hmm. and or people that just don't have them uh, mm-hmm. for whatever reason and can't get them back. Yeah. Um, like how just to, you know, other, another thing to be thankful for in our lives. And, you know, what's interesting too is be aware of... Um, this was another thing that came out in that Bible study the other day, was be aware of your spiritual senses, you know, because sure. when they bring Bartimaeus to, to Jesus, Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus is, what he says is, I want to see. But what's interesting is, is because he was calling out for Jesus, son of David, he recognized who Jesus was, you know, and we know that he was all in because he says he threw aside his cloak, which is like how he stays warm at night. So if this doesn't work, Bartimaeus could die. Like this is like, it's a big act. So what's interesting is is Jesus gives him the only sense that that he needs because he already can see. He can see who Jesus is, you know, by his faith. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus is like, "Okay, well, we'll just fix the the eternal the external part." So it's kind of neat. So yeah, but like like Jesus talks about in the beatitudes, you know, blessed are those who um, you know, hunger and thirst for righteousness. And you have different things where it's like it's very sense sensational. Um, but yeah, think about those too. And how does, how do your spiritual senses and your bodily senses interact with each other, you know? And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's, there's so many things to think about this week. If you, if you find yourself bored in prayer, you're not paying attention. Amen. <laughs> also, uh, the, this week uh, would be the feast of St. Jude, um, St. Oh. Jude Thaddeus. And we, so if you watch the chosen, um, for those of us He's that my do, favorite. I love they call him Thaddeus in yeah, it because he's Thad. not St. Jude yet. It's like he's not that Jude, or mm-hmm. they don't use the word Jude. Sure. And a lot of people can confuse that with uh, Judas Iscariot, who yes. was the betrayer. I, yeah, I think that's why, you know, because, and they always say that in the Bible, Judas, not Iscariot, to be clear. Yeah. So St. Jude is the patron saint of lost causes. So, you know, for people that lose a sense, lose, yeah. um, lose their way. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what St. Jude is there for. So we'll have, um, I don't think anybody knows this yet, but I think we should put out prayer cards I maybe agree. this week for, um, with the St. Jude prayer on them. Let um, it be done. Let it be written. So that we can do it. And like, you can pray it, um, yeah. here whenever we will get to it of all the, um, saints on Friday, mm-hmm. November 1st for all saints day. So, well, and it's like, if, if you don't find yourself, you know, intrigued, by any of this stuff. I mean, that's why we have the saints. I mean, the Gospels are obviously, like, the most, like, some of these stories and these characters, you know, are, are super important for us. But, like, the saints are are yet another example of, of God's grace. And St. Jude, you know, is one of those those cool apostle saints that kind of has his, his feet in both camps. You know, he's got his, the sainthood, and we're getting to know him, but also he's in this Gospel. So it's a really cool, um, really cool person to to pray for, especially, like, you might not have anything necessarily physically wrong with you, and yet you can't get over that hurt habit or hang up that we we talk about at Celebrate Recovery every week. Um, you should come anyway. But uh, Saint Jude is uh, he's an awesome saint. If you have an addiction or if you if you are you feel like you can't get out of a rut that you might have found yourself in, you know maybe a bad habit. Um, like Saint Jude is a great person to to look to. Um, it's very merciful. You know, we always think about, oh, he's the patron saint of lost causes, but 
someone with a, who is a lost cause just needs chance after chance after chance. So Jude is a great patient saint, you know, to to walk with. So get to know him. I've been doing it. It was actually funny. The band that I used to play with at my old uh, parish of employment or whatever you want to call it, where, mm-hmm. where I was, uh, the band, <laughs> we were we were called the Thaddeus Experience. Oh, good on Tom. I know. So every week for like eight years, I was like, St. Jude, pray for us. And then... Uh, I think I heard you guys once up at the diocese place yeah. or something. Yeah, so, we did yeah. it at the... At the um, that was like the third version. We had like three versions because it was just the group that played at the youth mass at St. Joe's for for all those years. But anyway, yeah. Anyway. So it's kind of weird. It's like again, these saints you get to know them, and it's it's crazy how how they they can kind of lead you and guide you. So all right, um, of course, check out all the intentions we've got. Uh, we had some mass intentions available uh, in the upcoming week and stuff. So if if those are still there, give us a call if you if you want to find out. Uh, see if those are available. Mm-hmm. And then we've got um, upcoming events uh, on the 28th. So this upcoming Monday, mm-hmm. uh, we've got um, an event that will be hosted by our OCIA leaders, Michael DeSanctis and Kelly DeSanctis. Um, and they're going to be going over, um, how does it say it here? The Catholic the- perspective on death. Yes, which is cool, you know, because that that is something that I think it applies to everybody. So if you're interested in kind of taking a look at how we view it um, as Catholics, as Christians, you know, come. Um, they always do a great job of explaining these things. And um, and the Catholic, like you just you just attended a funeral. Just attended a funeral. You're planning two funerals planning today. Planning two funerals today. So we've been and, talking uh, about it a lot. <laughs> in the past, I've actually heard Father Dennis Martin, who is over at St. Vincent, talk on death. Oh, he's so good. So good. Oh, he's so good. Yeah. yeah. So if you ever get a chance to hear him mm-hmm. talk about death, because um, yeah. he sits with families all the time over there at St. Vincent mm-hmm. as they, they're losing a loved one. I, um, I guess his what I'm trying perspective to say is don't, is don't shy away from the topic. Yeah. You know, if you see this and you're like, oh, that's not interesting or that's not really doesn't really apply to me you know um we all die we all die but we were looking at when we were looking at some of the readings that the church you know kind of suggests for funerals today with the funeral we were planning i was planning with the family today and um and it was interesting it was the it was from i think it's corinthians it's the it's matt marr took the words you know oh death where is your sting you know Mm. oh hell where is your victory you know but i had never actually paid attention to the verses that are right before that and it just talks about how how for us, you know, life has changed. You know, life life doesn't necessarily end. It's just different, which is such a countercultural thing to what we're used to. Like, we're so used to hearing. And so getting to plan funerals, attending funerals, um, they've actually become, I mean, I don't want to sound morbid, but like one of my favorite things that the Catholic Church does because they're so hopeful like mm-hmm. I think as Catholics we often get painted into the corners like super judgy and and all that stuff and of course there's there's all that to go with it which is why we have the sacrament of reconciliation but the the mercy granted in a funeral like in the prayers like when you actually pay attention to the words I mean it's mm-hmm. the song of farewell into the final commendation it's, it's like I don't even I don't even have to know the person who died and I'm like it's I'm yeah. a mess <laughs> it's beautiful so yeah I'm yeah. getting choked I know I it it Every time I sing it now, um, mm-hmm. which was today, you know. Mm-hmm. Which um, what Michael uh, DeSanctis, when he wrote this little thing, it actually kind of says what we're saying. Well, so be sure to so read that's, it. Yeah. That, and that's funny that he uses the finish line. The, mm-hmm. sec- uh, the second reading over at the funeral I was at was Second Timothy. It was fight the good fight. I have which, finished the race. I have kept the faith. Yeah. Yep. Um, which the Thirsting actually has a song about. If you ever heard the Thirsting, is a Catholic. I love that, I love that that's song. That's a really good I've song. Heard that song. Yeah. Yes. So, so ch- um, but yeah, check out says, the thirsting. <laughs> yeah, check out the thirsting. All these plugs. Um, it says this session will offer participants a reason to approach death with faith, not fear. An assumption of the session is that the adult journey of faith begins at the finish line, with each of us confronting the reality of our own mortality and making the decision to believe in the eternal life promised us through Jesus' own victory over death, which is interesting because I actually had to explain this to my daughter. I feel like she comes up every episode now, but um, like we were talking, she she asked why we have um, Jesus on the cross because her friend who's not Catholic, there was a cross that just didn't have Jesus on it, you know, mm-hmm. the, the corpse on it. And um, it was interesting. And I got to just kind of be like, because it reminds us that that's kind of our reality. 
but we know that there's something that comes next. Whereas the cross by itself reminds us of what comes next. So it's 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 just a it's something that I think that our culture shies away from because we don't as a culture like finality. We don't we don't like things to be sort of cut and dry. We like things very fluid in our culture. Mm-hmm. So uh, there is nothing more, you know, um, finite it seems than death and yet here we are as a church saying actually no so like the <laughs> there's cruci- more so i wear my crucifix every day mm-hmm. um uh, to remind me that uh, what jesus did for me in particular yes. we don't i mean yeah he did it for all of us but i remember that for me mm-hmm. to to go with that that i'm an easter people is yeah. that like how oh, we absolutely. Like, bring it together like is that mm-hmm. yeah no i think that, that i think it? that's absolutely right but that's that's the thing is it's like i think that some people myself i used to be this way so i can say this like, we don't like to think about the cross. Sure. Like, we like to go to Easter. You know, it's it's lovely. And uh, this but point Good was Friday actually... Friday is one of the of most it. solemn, when we best go, services of the year. Bishop Fulton Sheen, uh, St. Fulton Sheen, bless it, wherever he's at, I forget. Uh, but <laughs> Something. He's awesome. I was watching a video of him, which is so weird when you can watch a video of an actual saint talking. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he said, um, he's actually talking about the Mass, and he said the Mass in a short explanation, is reaching through time and touching Jesus on the cross. Sure. And I was like, ooh, that's good. And then he goes, and touching his dead, like his dead body, and and having it like in your hands come back to life, in the like all at once. And I was hmm. like, I'm but excited I'm for Mass this weekend. <laughs> It's like, well, I'm excited for this whole uh, week. I mean, it, yeah. there's there's not as there's all the regular stuff that yeah. happens, but um, I'm so excited about All Saints Day. We yes. have three masses out here for the Holy yep. Day, mm-hmm. um, seven before the first Friday Adoration, mm-hmm. which is does still happen, even though it's All Saints Day. Yep. Um, and then we have 12:05. And then at 5 p.m., we'll have a bilingual mass out here. Mm-hmm. Super excited over here in the church. And then we're going to have a fiesta to celebrate Dia de la Muertes. Um, and I mm-hmm. hope I got that right. I'm still practicing my Spanish. Yeah. But to, I think I'm close. If you say it with like more of an accent, I think it's like muertos. But yeah. I mean, you said well, it correctly. A, you said yeah, it better muertos. than I do. It's in the bulletin. You can read it. Like my daughter, who if doesn't you... speak much Spanish but understands it, <laughs> yeah. corrects me on that one all the time. But it's Day of the Dead well, for the us that English she can speaking. Is it's not just because she's a great Spanish speaker, an amazing person, as yeah. Sam is, but it's because of Coco. Yeah. I mean, if you've watched Coco, which so is we'll a great be, movie. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going to have, um, you can bring food beforehand if you want to bring a dish to share. Uh, mass over here, and then we're going to walk back across the parking mm-hmm. lot to have a big fiesta yeah. with an ofrenda, which I know I got right. Yes, um, <laughs> which will have again candles and mm-hmm. flowers, bring pictures of our loved ones that have passed, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and then food that we're going to share. Um, so I'm. And we've I'm done super this. Excited. We've done this as a parish before. I know we did it last year a little bit, mm-hmm. but not this much. No, you know, and really, uh, I guess a shout out to. Um, you know, this is the first time we've celebrated this feast um, with uh, San Esteban, with yeah. St. Stephen's. And there are so many people over there that like, we get this tradition, uh, much of it, uh, from Mexico mm-hmm. and from Hispanic culture. So uh, we're, it's, so, it's so fun to be able to, you know, share in so many of these traditions. Um, I was talking to a couple of people from, from over at St. Stephen's. Uh, they were here at St. Jude's for something, and we were chatting, and they were saying, it's interesting how, because um, I was saying, like, oh, I'm so excited for that, and and they were telling me how they don't really sell, they were like, where where are you from? What's your heritage? I was like, well, I'm Irish, a lot, <laughs> you know, I guess, a lot Irish, and, and they were like, and they told me that they've never really kind of thought about St. Patrick's Day. And it was kind of this really neat exchange where I'm sure. like, well, I'm super excited to to celebrate this, and and because of the merge um, with St. Andrews, oh. and I was I was I wasn't gonna say it, some the partnership with St. Stephen's, and the, with the like, there's been a lot of stuff over the last several months where it's like, oh, this is difficult, this is, and it is, I understand, you know, struggles of of this, but this was a really cool moment where it was like it sort of dawned on myself and the person that I was talking to that because of the partnership, we now have. We we both have an extra holiday. There's lots of extra that were, well, I know, but that like just this in this specific conversation, they were mm-hmm. like, when we get to St. Patrick's Day, 
let's do something Mm -hmm. and I want to learn about it. And I was like, okay, well, this weekend I want to learn more. So it was just kind of neat. We all of a sudden have way more holidays and I like that. I love holidays. (laughs) So, and then, um, well, the day of the dead is actually just not one day. It's a whole, it's three days, which is encompassing. So, um, the last different levels, (laughs) you've got all saints, all souls, all souls and actually Halloween. So, um, um, you know, all Hallows Eve and stuff. So all souls day, We'll have 4.30 Mass, and then afterwards, we're just going to have a candlelight service for all of our mm. loved ones that have passed this year um, here and at the St. Jude. So come celebrate with the, the families. The um, candle, though. Yes, like, yeah, so at each, of the f- at each of the funerals, we have a, a candle we put out for the family with the name, um, of, with the the name of the deceased on it. Mm. Um, and then at that All Souls Day, we'll give them the candle to take home um, to burn throughout the year. So, so. they were lit. At the funeral, mm-hmm. and they will be lit at this candle service. So it's just kind of a neat way to bring all like like that all that idea of all souls, but specifically all our our people. I don't want to say all our souls, but like the souls that were in relationship with us before they left, before they went, you know, mm-hmm. before life was changed, you know, as as the scripture says. So. And Father Ross, uh, Father Ross, and I have um, obviously have lost loved ones this past year. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we're not going to probably be able to go to those churches where that was, but yeah. um, again, anybody who's lost somebody this year, mm-hmm. um, if you can't get to wherever that church yeah. is, or they didn't, they weren't, mm-hmm. you know, that way, come celebrate yeah. their life um, here mm-hmm. on All Souls Day. You know, and it's okay. You know, we we pray for the dead. You know, obviously, um, in the Catholic faith. But you know, something that was interesting. I remember when. When fa- like you know my my grandmother who passed away a couple of years ago, she led this group in the Archdiocese of Saint Paul, Minneapolis, called the Mothers of Priests, um, and she was kind of the sort of the a big big name in that group because her son. Uh, my uncle Kevin is a priest. He's about to be a bishop, bishop. which is really weird. So exciting! <laughs> say that. Uncle Bishop Kevin, Bishop Uncle Kevin. I don't know what to. He he always is it was like, like next week too. Yeah, it's it's coming up. So uh, Bishop, um, yeah, elect is going to be a <laughs> he's going to be a a, a um, auxiliary bishop for now. So we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, um, what was huh. interesting Make though is when when Coast. father when Father Ross's mother. Uh, God rest her, passed away this past year. I got to kind of go and into the chapel and sort of be like, hey, Grandma, the mother of priest just showed up. And I was like, I'm sure, you know, she was she was an epistol. She was great, as was Father Ross's mom. So those two, that's a scary combination. Because <laughs> you know they're talking to each other. Like, oh, my grandson works for your son. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a beautiful connection because we do believe, you know, every time we pray in the Mass... Uh, the holy, 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 we say, you know, we join with all of the angels and saints in their song of praise. And if you are in heaven, you are a saint. You know, that's not just the big S saints like um, like St. Jude. You know, it's it's everyone up there. So, or wherever it Shockingly, is. Shockingly, they don't talk about it very often, but there is a St. Sarah in heaven. Is there? Yeah. That's exciting. She hangs on my wall, actually. That's cool. Uh, Father Ross and uh, Jesse had found her for me in oh. France, so. Beautiful. Oh, and this this little bit, little official tangent away Business. from the, uh, the spiritual and the beautiful. Um, but just so you know, uh, if you ask us to put something in our bulletin, because our bulletin, if you haven't noticed, excuse me, uh, has changed a little, um, and we're using a different program for it. And so the organization, the length of it, because we're trying to use other means of communication, not just the bulletin, excuse me, so we can reach more people. So um if you give us something, we may have to edit it down. We may have to just take the text and use the text. We may, you know, cut and splice a picture that you give us. Um, we may re- reorganize the whole thing. We may recreate it. Um, we just want just from this moment on for everyone to know that um, it's nothing personal towards anybody in specifically or someone's like, oh, this person's annoying. They give us... It. No, it's just we might just have to edit it. So if that happens, know that... That's just the way it is because we have to fit everything into six pages. We'll which get is all not the important information in it for you. We promise. Always. Yeah. We promise. And if we don't get it in that week, we'll get it in as soon as possible. But there are other ways. Like we can post things at the doors, we can do inserts. Um, yeah. So just know that like we are getting it out there. I mean, heck, like you had a bunch of stuff on the placemats at the spaghetti dinner. Which I think the most positive feedback I've gotten from that, by the way, is Father Ross's soup. Oh, him and his soup. Oh, yeah, his yeah. soup was so good. And I mean, that's what everyone keeps saying. And what's funny is, is 
everyone keeps being shocked that Father Ross made it. That's my favorite. They're like, part. well, they're, like he gave somebody the re- somebody led to me today. He gave somebody the recipe and they made it. I'm like, N- no, he went over there and made it himself. He did it. Yeah, yeah. Father and Luke held things, but yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, that's kind of how they're 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 co. Yeah, Father Luke held it and. Yeah. Father Ross, yep. So anyway, on the next page, we have more from the Disciple Maker Index. Mm-hmm. Uh, Father Ross talks about this a lot in his shore face, so yes. read about it there. Mm-hmm. The Fall Seminary Discernment Weekend at St. Mark's is coming up in no- November. Mm-hmm. And uh, like we talked about just a moment ago, there is still First Friday Adoration yes. on uh, November 1st. Mm-hmm. Um, just be aware, we have switched to winter hours, so if you are coming to pray... I uh, know that the church locks at 7 now, not 7 9. PM. 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are one of those adorers, we've hopefully contacted you. Mm-hmm. Um, that if you come at se- if you come um, between the seven hours of 7 and 9, mm-hmm. whenever... Um, if you don't have the code to get in, call us. Call us. At the office, please, and we will, we will get that for you. Um, just a quick thing about the uh, discernment weekend. Um, fellas... Young men, uh, I discerned whether or not to go to seminary, and Jesus said, no, not what I'm calling you to. And um, so I just want you to know that like, if you decide that you're going to open yourself up to the possibility of going to seminary to discern, maybe you might be called to the priesthood. You know, don't be afraid. Just do it. You know, if yeah. nothing else, you're going to have a weekend where you get to spend time with Jesus, with other guys who are pursuing greatness and holiness. And so I just want to encourage you, if you've never done something like this before, just do it. You know, don't don't think about it. Just sign up, go on the weekend, and allow God to work in you and through you. Um, like I said, I did things like this, and I'm not a priest, you know, deacon... Um, uh, Matt, Matt O'Colic, who, yeah. O'Colic, you know, he went to seminary. He started out in seminary with Father Ross. He discerned out. You know, my cousin, uh, uh, Emily, uh, she was a nun for seven years and got to the end right mm-hmm. before her final vows. And the Lord was like, actually, I'm calling you to something else. And now she's married. So, you know, so you never know. So just don't think that because you sign up for this, you're going to be a priest. That's not necessarily the case. But this is going to help. This is going to lead you to what God has for you, is the idea. It'll lead you to your vocation, which sometimes is a a very interesting journey. I just think that sometimes, yeah, I just think that sometimes (laughs) people think, well, if I even open the door, I'm going to be a priest. It's like, no, we're not that desperate. No. (laughs) And then the uh, new November calendar is on the back of the bulletin. So be sure to take that out and uh, get ready for November with all of the fun excitement that there is. And just, we said this a month ago, or Father did from the from the altar, I know, or from his, you know, priest chair, whatever. What is that? The celebrant's chair? That's the word I'm looking for. I don't know. Uh-huh. His seat up there um, at the end of Mass. One of, what do you call seat it? Seat of wisdom. His second, ha- his second oh, homily. His second homily? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where Father Ross will explain something. And, uh, and he made a really good announcement a month ago, so I'll repeat it. And he'll probably say it this Sunday. If you have something that you would like on our monthly calendar. We're trying to get people to see the big picture, as he said. So if you have an event or something that you want on there or that you think should be on there that the parish does that's not on there, let us know. You know, We'd be happy to you know, fill that calendar up. We want to do as much revealing Jesus as we possibly can. Yeah. I think that's it. You know what? I think we should yeah. make this big, huge calendar and print it and put it on the bulletin boards, too. Just like a giant version, yeah. blow it up. Like 11 by 17 on the bulletin boards. Okay, so we did, okay. we came up with two things. This is like a cool like <laughs> like video video recorded staff meeting here because we've got. <laughs> so what were the two things? One, we're gonna blow it up and put it on the bulletin board, and then there yeah. was the second thing. Yeah, we'll get back to it. Yeah, okay, all that. But we'll have to watch the replay so we can remember <laughs> what it was. Anyhow, just know that we're praying for you. We had three or four prayer requests come in today. People actually coming into the office. I'm gonna give a shout out. There was a lady who came in who uh, asked for prayers for like a someone who like. I won't divulge the details because it's personal, but let me just put it like this. This is someone asking for prayers for someone who you wouldn't think they'd ask prayers for, like a past, like a past relation, all these kinds, like, and it was beautiful, and we actually prayed together, Um, but that's the thing. So if you need prayers or if you want to pray, just come on into the office. We're happy to talk, happy to chat, Um, and uh, for all the guys who couldn't come to the 12, I will put out a video shortly saying what we did. We'll also have some stuff for people who couldn't come to Faith Formation this past week. Um, In the past couple of the weeks. The past couple of weeks, yeah. Just kind of catching you up, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. God bless you all. We're praying Peace. for you.